everyone, Christina Werner here. Welcome to another video for assignassistamp.com. Today I'm going to be using the interlocking leaves to create some backgrounds for cards. And I've also picked out three different thank you themed dies from Simon. I'm not quite sure which one I'm gonna use at this point. I will only be using one of these and you'll see which one I use when we get there. Starting out by stamping the background stamp. So I'm taking the mouse pad or the foam pad out of my MISTI stamp positioning tool. And then I can take this cling background stamp and position it inside my MISTI. Since I'm going to be making three backgrounds, it just makes sense to stamp with my MISTI because after I stamp one, I can take out that paper, put in a new sheet of paper and stamp again. The paper I'm using today is watercolor paper from Strathmore. This is the pre-cut five by seven watercolor paper. So I'm prepping that watercolor paper with an anti-static powder tool because I will be doing some heat embossing. And also because I'm doing heat embossing, I'm stamping the background stamp design in Versamark ink. I'm inking up that background really, really well and then swinging the door of my MISTI over onto my watercolor paper and pressing down with my fingertips so that this entire background stamp transfers to my watercolor paper. I'm using some gold embossing powder today. This is the color Gilded from Brutus Monroe, and it's going to look absolutely beautiful paired with the colors of my watercoloring today. So I'm sprinkling on that gold embossing powder, tapping off the excess, and then I use my heat tool to heat set this until all of the powder is smooth and melted. As soon as you see the powder melt, move on to a different section of the background. You don't need to linger or it could uh, risk warping your, wa your watercolor paper. All right, so I've got one background done. I went ahead and repeated that process for two more for a total of three. Today I'm going to be using some Distress Reinkers as my watercolor, and I needed a slick surface to put that ink out on, so I'm using a Tonic Easy Clean Mat. I also taped my watercolor pieces to hardboards so that as they dry, they will dry very, very flat. This also gives me the opportunity to lift and tip these boards up to get those colors moving. That'll make more sense as we get going here. My first color combination is a vintage photo, candied apple, fossilized amber, and carved pumpkin. And I'm just putting a little droplet of each of these colors out onto this slick surface that will uh, make do as a palette while I'm watercoloring. These reinkers, the inks, are super, super concentrated, so you don't need very much. In fact, I probably put too much down here because you will see once I start painting that these have so much color packed into those little tiny bottles. It's a really great way to get an a intense saturated color, but without having to do layers and layers and layers of watercolor. I'm only going to be doing one layer of watercolor for all of these backgrounds. I wet the entire surface of my watercolor paper with a Distress Spray Bottle, the, the sprayer, and now I'm taking a size 14 Zen brush from Royal Lemay Nickel, sopping it, lots of water up in my water bucket and then bringing it to each of these colors and spreading it out onto my background. You can see that just dipping that brush into each of these inks just fills the brush with tons and tons of color. It's super easy to get intense color this way. It's very, very similar to using liquid watercolors. There are quite a few companies out there that have them these days. Uh, Hero Arts, um, Pink Fresh, I think has some. Also Concord and Ninth have liquid watercolors. Some, those are just some of the stamp companies that have liquid watercolors. And you can get a similar look with this because the liquid watercolor is very, very concentrated like these reinkers. The reinkers here are kind of fun to have because they can uh, serve dual purpose. They can re-ink your Distress ink pads, but you can also watercolor with them. And I haven't watercolored with these in quite some time. I don't think I've ever used them for a background. I've mostly just painted images, but I can see myself using this process more often because of how these turned out. They're absolutely beautiful. My next color combination Oh, it's my favorite. This is Villainous Potion, Picked Raspberry, and Mustard Seed. And I knew I loved Villainous Potion when it came out a few weeks ago, but I really, really love it after seeing it watercolored. 
this purple is the most amazing color, especially mixed with a magenta pink like picked raspberry and mustard seed, which is a nice uh, yellow. So I've sprayed my watercolor background once again. I've cleaned off my brush. It just has water on it. And I'm grabbing some of that villainous potion, which is such an intense purple. And it's absolutely beautiful. It stays pretty intense even after it's dried too. I'm grabbing some picked raspberry, kind of mixing those colors right on my watercolor paper. I'm not being too precious about this. I want the colors to mix and overlap and start to blend with each other. Now I try to only have a few spots where the purple and the yellow met because generally when purple and yellow mix, you get kind of a muddy gray brown. But I was pleasantly surprised by the things that this, these inks did when they mixed. The mustard seed into Villainous Potion kind of created this intense green. It was really, really cool looking. Now, one of the reasons why it's a great idea to tape your project down to a board is you can lift it up and tip it around and add color and really manipulate the way the colors run. So as I'm uh, letting these dry, I'm letting all of these air dry, I'm making sure to tip them up a little bit so that they're tilted downward and that's going to pull that color toward the bottom of these leaf shapes. There were also some areas that had a lot of color kind of collecting at the bottom and I thought it might create a weird spot. So I did use my paper towel, just the corner of it to pick up some of that color. And that's a great way to eliminate huge puddles of water. My last color combination is pine needles, mowed lawn and broken china. And on this one, I had kind of learned my lesson. I didn't need quite as much ink, so I didn't put as large of droplets of the colors on my surface here. And this is also one of the reasons why I think this third color combination had a little bit lighter of color, not as intense of color, because I used less ink on my makeshift palette. Now, if I had put more color down, I think this would be even more intense, but you do you want the risk of possibly wasting ink? Now, when it comes to things like this, I don't know if it's possible to actually waste any ink because I could have spritzed those puddles of color and pounced some watercolor paper into them and created additional backgrounds. Um, today, I was just moving on to the next project and I didn't want to take the time to do that, but you could definitely stretch your colors that way, just uh, reusing that ink that was left over from your watercolor painting. So on this one, I'm dropping in some additional droplets of color, trying to get more kind of darker areas. And then as I tip it up, you can see all of those like V-shaped points on the leaves are collecting all of that color. And I can just pick that up with the edge of my paper towel and it sops up some of that color. Now you could definitely leave it there and let it dry and you're gonna get some really cool water spots. So I let those dry and while they were drying, I decided to take the three dies that I was considering for these cards and cut them out of some matte gold cardstock from Simon. So I have the, I think it's the big thanks, bold thanks and thanks, thank you swirl dies. And I'm just cutting each of these out so I can see them, put them on top of the backgrounds, kind of place them and see if I like how they look. Um, the ones that I don't use, I can save for future projects. So here are the dried pieces here. This is my favorite with that Villainous Potion purple shade. Uh, this one is also beautiful. I love that intense red right there in the center with the browns and golds. It's absolutely beautiful, perfect for fall. And the third color combination with the blues and greens also looks really beautiful. Not as intensive colors, but still beautiful. So I brought over all of my dyes my die cuts to my projects. And I loved these backgrounds so much. I just couldn't uh, bear with covering up any of them. So I decided to use the Bold Thinks die and I cut out that die two more times so I had three to work with. I also cut down my watercolor pieces to be the perfect size for an A2 card. So each of these is cut down to four and a quarter by five and a half tall. And I adhered them to white folded card bases uh, with some Tombow Extreme adhesive. 
So these are edge to edge watercolor backgrounds on the front of these cards. And I think it's so dramatic and beautiful. So like I said, I adhered each of these to the front of the card bases. I like to uh, put the adhesive on the card base and then kind of work from the full to get the, the watercolor piece on there just perfectly. So I placed each one of these die cuts on the front of the cards, and then I picked them up with tweezers. This is a set of tweezers from EK Success, and I dabbed on some dots of glue. This is a Honey Bee Precision Glue. And then I use a T-square ruler to help me get this die cut on here completely straight. And that helped it get to be the perfect horizontal line. Now, in order to get it in the same spot on the other cards, you can take that T-square ruler and you can line up the cards together and then put that T-square ruler on the side. And then you can adhere the greeting on the second card in the same exact spot. I thought that was a really fun tip to share with you guys. So here are my three cards today made using the interlocking leaves background stamp, gold embossing powder, and various distress reinkers. I love the intense color on these. They're absolutely beautiful. I can't wait to put these in the mail and to send them out to friends and family. It's the perfect time of year to send thank you cards. Thanks so much for watching. I will see you guys in another video very soon.